This is my studio, Hidden Track Studios in Folkestone, down in South Kent. Um, my name's Oz Craggs and I am a producer and mix engineer. Um, in the years that I've you know, been doing this, I've worked with people like uh, Neck Deep, Mallory Knox, my own band Feed the Rhino, um, and just hundreds and thousands of other people as well. <laughs> Deep down, I kind of always knew I was going to follow a path of music, you know, when I was, as soon as I was talking, you know, if people asked me what I wanted to do, I used to say about being, working in music or playing music and stuff. So kind of that has always been there. And then probably at the same kind of age, I was really interested in technology and, you know, the kind of engineering side of things and how things worked and the mechanics of things. And just this kind of penny drop of this is, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. It was literally as kind of clear as that for me. And it was, that was it. And I've just, that was 15 years ago and I've kind of not lost that love for it or that kind of buzz for it really it's just always the same i think this isn't a job you kind of just fall into as something to do and i don't think it's something you do because you think you're going to make a fast buck doing it the, the people that i know that have kind of done it for a long time i think probably agree with me that it becomes almost a bit like an obsession that you like it's a love hate thing you know you all you want to do is make your stuff better and it becomes obsessive almost you know and that i think that is genuinely what it's like it's, it's like an addiction to me i think so it's um it's an all-encompassing career. It's it's like a lifestyle choice, I think, almost as well, because you know you have to. As I said, it just eats up so much of your life doing it, and I think all the time you're not working, you probably you know do a lot of time maybe reading or researching stuff because the technology moves so fast. You have to kind of I think you, it's important to keep a finger on the pulse of that, and also styles change and genres change, and you know you have to stay. I think you have to stay relevant with your production and understand kind of what the people coming to you expect of you. I think the cha most challenging factor of getting the best out of an artist is is probably the side of the job that people maybe you don't see talked about as much but it's the kind of the interaction skills between you and a musician and understanding their kind of mental process and that can come down to the personality of the person <clears throat> the dynamics in the band but also you know the instrument they play and I've, I've kind of realized that you know I have to alter my kind of the way I speak to people and the kind of my methods and the speed I work for the instrument because with vocals or drums it's it's such a physical performance that you know you can you can shatter someone by saying the wrong thing or being too critical or not kind of conveying your ideas in a clear enough way that kind of becomes stressful for them so I think you know you have to really tailor it but that's something I'm really always keen to work hard on and always kind of trying to improve is my kind of the way I interact with the artists. I want people to feel comfortable. I want to feel like people can just relax and give their best rather than kind of don't want to embarrass themselves or anything like that. So that's something I'm really keen on. I think the big thing for me with, with mixing and producing is the, the kind of more I do it, the more I realise actually the focus of what the production should be on. And I think a lot of people can kind of get swept away with the technicality of how something sounds and how perfect in isolation things can sound. And the truth is, in reality, that really doesn't really affect the mix very much at all. It should really be primarily focused on how everything blends and also the kind of the overall emotion and intensity of the music, I think. That's kind of so that's something I kind of really enjoy working on and pushing and pushing that side of it most. I think the emotional aspect of the kind of music is paramount, I think, you know. And that could be, you know, that emotion doesn't necessarily have to be happy or sad it can be a range of things but I think if the artist wants the track to be a certain way and you're trying to pull it in a completely different I don't think you're ever going to kind of reach a <clears throat> equilibrium so can I try and get on board with the artist quite early on <clears throat> even in a mixing role I kind of try and really understand but I think to be honest I think you know hopefully I like to think that like you know doing it for over 10 years I'm starting to kind of get a feel for kind of what people want and you can kind of understand that you know obviously you don't always get it right and sometimes you think this is you know if you think people are trying to push in one direction they're trying not to and they're trying to go in another but generally the kind of like you know if something's got kind of really intense vocals you know passionate vocals and that are kind of really got a message to say you're not going to mix them low in the mix. It's just kind of obvious, really. I think it kind of becomes second nature that you instinctively know to do that. If there's quite a simple guitar part that kind of with something a lot more kind of technical over the top of it, I think you'd know naturally to balance it a certain way. So I think a lot of it kind of comes as um, 
you just kind of feel it out a little bit and it kind of just comes as gut instincts and stuff. But yeah, I mean, a big part of it is just to kind of make sure that whatever I'm doing, it, the artist is kind of, it's what they want as well, you know. Um, I'm not one of these kind of people that you kind of, it's my way or the highway. I always like to be like the, another member of the band, even in the mixed position, you know, I always kind of want feedback and I kind of want to know if this is right or that's right and encourage people to talk to me and kind of ask me questions. With recording drums, you have to be thinking about the, the song specifically and, ha you know, every part of recording a drum kit should be based on decisions made about the song. So the overhead, you know, positions, what mics you're using on close mics, if you're going to use close mics, if you're going to, you know, put more than one mic on something or if you're going to use room mics or all that kind of thing and positioning and everything like that. And, and even, you know, then after that processing and everything comes down to the decision of what am I trying to achieve with this. So there's no real kind of, I don't think there's a kind of, I do this and this is how you should do it kind of thing with drums no one size fits all but there's some basic housekeeping I think you can I think people should focus on more certainly for when I get mixed tracks I think there's things that I see kind of crop up and that's you know good gain staging um, getting kind of conservative levels people always record too hot for some reason so you know, keeping your levels down below minus 10 peaking is really important I think in getting a good drum sound with guitars it's sort of just a sum of little parts so the instrument first of all, the first thing I'll do when I record guitar is restring it myself so I know that the strings have gone on fresh, I know how they've gone on, I know they've not been overwound on the tuning peg or underwound, I know that it's the right tension on the string, the right gauge, because that's massively important, especially if you're doing down tuning stuff, people really under gauge things and it can really affect the, the guitar sound. So it goes from that level, then the intonation of the guitar and the setup of it and the tuning of it and the way the strings are stretched in to things like if we're using pedals, what pedals, how they're patched, is the power supply to them clean, you know, then onto the amp, using decent amps, I've got a kind of selection of amps here and, you know, loads of heads, loads of cabs and combos and various different toys, to, you know, to play through. Frequency wise, you know, having a guitar part in a certain place and then having a vocal in a certain place and having the bass in a certain place, that's understanding how everything fits together is really important for guitar tones, I think. But um, with things like miking and stuff, it's really simple. It's usually 257, sometimes a ribbon if it needs it, sometimes a room mic, rarely, but if it is needed, I'll do that. But generally it's 257s and that's like, that's it, simple. You know, tips to people that are kind of coming into this or, you know, wanting to do better and in this thing is, is to follow your, follow your gut with a lot of decisions. So I think it's really important, I think, early on to establish a kind of, you know, a quality line of your work <clears throat> and sticking to it and not saying, oh, well, I'm going to put a lot of work into this project. I'm not going to care about that one so much. I think it's just sticking to trying to produce a really consistent level of quality. I've used Audio Mic Pre's for the last six, seven years in various different forms and guises. And I've always been a huge fan of the way they sound. It's a really important kind of tonal palette in my arsenal that I've used on all of the bands that I've listed that have all included an audience sound in them because it's become just as important to me as any other flavour. And when Audient uh, released the 800, I kind of knew it was just really ideal for, for my workflow and what I like because it gives me eight channels of that famous Audient sound that I like and I've used for, for Donkey's years. I, I really enjoy HMX9. Um, I'm still kind of learning, like it takes, you know, I like to really spend a lot of time and I find that the more time I spend on them, the more, you know, I'm getting out of it. But uh, every time I've used them, they've always kind of exceeded my expectations of them. I was really impressed when I first got them, actually. It's really great. I mean, because of the size of the room I use, I generally use um, small diaphragm condensers on overheads. Uh, and these can really help add some weight to them and pick up more of the drum, which is really, really a nice function to have. And it's having two and having them kind of really closely matched really works well for kind of creating a really great solid kind of stereo image of the drums. With the first three channels, the 800, it's like great for doing bass because you've got a really clean mic preamp for, for a DI uh, just to capture the natural sound of the bass. You can then split the signal and mic up a cab and an amp, you know, have that mic'd up with maybe something with a colour on to kind of saturate it a little bit, give it a bit of fatness and depth. And then also I tend to split off something really horribly distorted pedal wise. Uh, and run that into another channel and distort it again through, through the retro channel uh, and that kind of balance gives you like loads of options and it's all there in one kind of one rack which is which is amazing yeah